but all everyone is talking about is the uh, Triple H interview that happened on Stephen A. Smith's uh, streaming show, his ESPN Plus show, where Triple H said that he is done. He is uh, he will never wrestle again. And I've seen nothing but uh, tweets and lots of stuff, lots of cool stuff about his career. But uh, yeah, lo- lots, lots, and lots of information about this interview. Did you see? I'm assuming you saw the interview, but what do you think the, of the interview? I, I saw the interview. You know, he told he told the story of of what happened. I mean, he they they had been keeping it you know pretty quiet. I mean, as far as like the details and how severe it was. I mean, and you Stephen and I, had, I even asked him about that too. Yeah, you and I had talked about it. Like you know what happened, and I you know I, I mean I was aware of, yeah. of it. You know, not not all the I wasn't aware of all the details, but I was aware of the major details. But um, yeah, you know, his career, you know, I mean, there was no way he was going to be able to wrestle again with a, you know, defibrillator in his heart. And, and he wasn't going to even, even if you take that out, he was with the heart issue the way it was. He was not going to be able to to wrestle. His heart is, you know, is is not at any close to 100 percent. Not now. It's not now either. Um, but it is much better. Um, he has made a pretty solid improvement since you know the, the the issue you know i mean where he was you know legitimately very near death yeah you know which is a real scary thing and you know to me like i mean it's it's been weird for me because you know so many people are talking about oh you know coming back and nxt and you know wrestling and it's like just you know it's like i i don't even think about that when it comes to him it's like i i mean when you know the situation it's like obviously he was never going to wrestle again and just as obviously, you don't want to put him in a position where he's working fourteen hour days. Oh yeah. I, you know what I mean? It's like it's like and that run in NXT is is, you know, fourteen to eighteen hour days. I mean, that's just what it is and traveling and the whole bit. And it's like, you know, I'm sure there's a part of him that would want to do that. I mean, I'm a big part of him. But it's like, you know, you gotta look out for yourself and your family and your kids at that at this stage. Yeah. And and um, you know, the idea of you know, whatever he could would be doing in the business. It's like not even I mean, to me, it's just not even a concern to me. It's it's just, you know, I just hope that he can live a happy, healthy, uh, you know, next however many years, 30 years, 50 years, whatever it can be. And don't, you know, play Russian roulette with it because yep. because the risks are not worth any rewards. There are no rewards. It's like he he is financially stable very you know more than financially stable i mean you know he's that family has enough money to live for generation after generation so the idea i know you know he's got a work ethic and he loves wrestling and everything but it's like you just you know you got to look out for yourself and for your kids and the wrestling stuff it's just you know i'm sure he's going to be involved in a certain way but as far as a big way and everything like that um anything that that involves stress which the wrestling business does in incredible levels, I would steer clear of it. He did say that he's back at the office and fully focused on the recruiting and development of their talent. And then they talked a lot about Gable Steveson. So is that a, uh, I guess, less of a stressful role for him? Yeah. I mean, as long, you know, if you're not in like having to make, you know, split second decisions and things like that, but I mean, there's, I'm sure there's things that he enjoys and, you know, obviously he should do what he enjoys as long as it doesn't put stress on his heart. You know, the thing that the first thing I thought about was, you know, when you're someone like him who has trained pretty much since he was uh, a teenager and at a very high level, like, I can't imagine he can do any like real weight lifting and it seems like that's something that is probably uh some therapy for him in, in a way and I, and I just wonder kind of you know mentally how I, I hope he has other things that that can sort of you know get him to that place because you know I he was doing bodybuilding contests when he's a teenager right yeah yeah he was Mr. Teenage New Hampshire and he's bodybuilding is is you know his his thing um which you know is has it's good and it's bad. Um, and it's, it's very much his thing. And so that, that aspect, you know, it's funny is like, cause I, I have that same thing in my brain that he does, you know, exactly. Actually. Yeah. You, you, you still go to the gym. I, I, I actually, I, I actually haven't been to the gym in a long, long time. Oh, really? No, not since, um, I, I went for when we got the shots, you mm-hmm. know, I went back to the gym for a while. And then when, you know, things got a little, you know, more, more dangerous i stopped going and um 
I, you know, I could go back at any time. I just haven't, you know, but I mean, I do stuff. I obviously I bike ride like crazy, but yeah, the, the thing is, is like, um, I, you know, it, it, as, as weird as this is, and it's very hard to give it up when you're, when you're in a situation where you have to, it's sort of like, you just have to, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's going to affect you mentally to a degree, but it's it, not as much like is even if you're like addicted to it and everything, it's like stopping it after a little while. It's like you just sort of get used to it and it's OK. You know, it's like you don't have to, especially, you know, when you look, he, he doesn't have to go anywhere with his shirt off. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's, some, you know, that's I'm sure what he looks like with his shirt off right now is is like a, you know, not even important to him anymore. And so it's not. You know, and, and again, I don't know what he's limited to doing. You know, I have not had that. You know, I'm not that close to him where I would have had that conversation with him. But, um, you know, as far as like what he can and can't do. But, um, you know, whatever, whatever it is, you know, I'm sure he's going to. One, one thing I would say is I'm sure he's going to eat right. OK, and I'm sure he's going to live healthy because that is also part of his brain, even if he can't lift weights at a heavy level which you know at his age really lifting weights at a heavy level probably is not the best idea anyway and you know as far as at a light level could he you know i I think he probably could i'm sure there's stuff he can do um you know whether it's rehab or whatever that he can put that that kind of focus and determination into um you know as a someone who does that and is competitive at that you can use those that competitive mentality towards you know, making what you have the best that you can, and it will help him in that way. I mean, because he will have the discipline. I mean, that's the one thing that 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 does develop for you is incredible discipline. And he's got that discipline to do what he needs to do, um, you know, to be as healthy as possible. But, you know, again, it's like you can have that and um, your body is going to do what your body's going to do. You know, he's at the mercy of of that. And there's nothing, you know, like you can do a lot of stuff to help it. But, um you know, the heart's a, a, a very delicate thing. And I mean, like, you know, I mean, it's it's not with what he has. You know, I, I don't want to go into, um you know, I mean, the, look, the potential, everyone knows what the pen- potential is if things go bad with what yeah. he has. I mean, he, I don't said, wanna, he, he, he flat out said that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to, you know, there's things I could say and, and everything. And, and, you know, quite frankly, if you look in the, when the daily update comes out and Dr. Patel, there's something from Dr. Patel in there and you can read it yourself. I don't really want to get into it like i haven't really wanted to get into it but yeah yeah i mean from the start i mean yes his his career is over and and um you know i mean it's it's you know obviously you know we had a very momental you know momentous momental you know monumental wrestling career um great worker you know without a doubt great you know great positioning in the ring a lot of little things he did very very well i thought his um timing and understanding the crowd was I have to say his timing and understanding the crowd was great because if I don't, then I'm an idiot because, <laughs> because you know, the stories of me watching his live matches, I think so, <laughs> but, um, you know, the, um, so, so, uh, you know, I mean, um, he's getting, you know, all kinds of, you know, the, you know, the stuff from, you know, he's helped, you know, he's helped out a lot of people. There'd be people who are, you know, who, who, who privately don't like him and probably should be quiet about that this week this week because it's not the week to do so and everything um but you know when you're in that position you're going to be helping people make careers and you're going to be killing careers you know i mean it's that's just the position that he was put in and and i mean even before nxt i mean that's one of the things he was there for he was there for frank opinions and you know you don't have to agree with all of them i'm sure nobody agrees with everything everyone does and there are probably people who you know he thought were not the guys to be the top guys. And sometimes he was right. And sometimes he's wrong. Like, like everyone, nobody's a hundred percent. And, and, you know, there were people who were very, very over that, you know, he suggested could not leave the company for various reasons. And, you know, some of them are, you know, probably have bitterness of it. Some of them just at this stage probably don't care anymore because it's 15 years later and you kind of just go, well, that's, that's part of being a wrestler. Yeah, I mean, you know, Scott Hall, we had the story of Scott Hall a couple weeks ago, and Triple H, obviously very close to him. And so, you know, it's just that getting to those moments, at least as far as like my wrestling fandom, where some of these guys get older, and it's like, oh, wow, like this is, you know, this is like a real thing. And, you know, he had some great comments about, uh, these really human comments um, about Stephanie being his rock, about his daughters, and, 
you know, maybe them not really understanding what he was going through because he's always that that like, you know, that that strong person in their life. And it was a you know, I, I thought he did a very good job at just being like a normal non wrestler, you know, in a sense, like he wasn't this bigger than life personality He's like the real person of Triple H. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's funny because, you know, not funny at all, but I mean, it's it's interesting because like literally it, on Saturday was the day that I listened to the Regal interview. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm I went through that, you know, um, and, you know, and, and his issues in, in some ways. I mean, I, I mean, I hate to say, oh, this is worse than that, but his issues were probably worse than than Paul's. But um, they're both bad. Yeah. And, you know, you go through that whole thing with Regal, who's, you know, 53 and Paul is um, 50, uh, 52, right? Um, 50, 52, I think maybe maybe almost they're actually similar ages, mm -hmm. even though everyone because because Regal was a star much earlier and, and Regal is, was like a mentor, you know, to Paul even actually. So people kind of think of, you know, Regal, the blue, you know, the blue bloods, right? In WCW. The Blue Bloods, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. You know, John Paul Levesque, which was one of his first pushes. And then, obviously, he repaid the favor and put trust in Regal. And unfortunately, when he lost power, you know, Regal uh, lost his job there. And that's the corporate world, you know. But, um, yeah, so it was so going through the Regal stuff. And then this, you know, um, you know, again, to me, like, this wasn't anything really new past – a, you know certain details i mean i knew the heart this the situation with the heart and everything i didn't know um you know the pneumonia kicked in the heart thing i just knew that he had you know the heart issue um which was public but you know obviously very downplayed at the time and um that you know he was you know i mean he wasn't going to come back to to wrestle from it and you know as far as coming back to work it would you know it'd have to be at a a different level and in you know just for his again his own well-being Hey, if you're a big fan of Wrestling Observer Radio, we got 12,000 episodes of all of our podcasts up at our website, WrestlingObserver.com. If you sign up today, you get access to every single one of them. The 12 to 18 new shows that we do every single week, you can podcast them, listen to them on the road, at work, working out, in the shower, wherever you listen to your podcasts. And also full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter and archives. So if you love what you hear, head to WrestlingObserver.com. 12,000 audio shows at your fingertips.